basically four things I focus on. A bit unstable when it comes to finances and things like that. that yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I do to get certain things done because once they hear this accent, <laughs> It is, put it on my little stand here. Good morning, back again with another video. I hope you like, I hope you like past couple of days videos. It looks like the an analytics say they it, it is. So I appreciate the views. If you need some more clarification, I'm more than happy to help you if you need it. I wanna talk about like how to rent, how to rent certain, um, how to rent certain uh, establishments when you're running a business. What negotiations that I have done to mitigate certain things, to save a little bit, and just to basically just get in the door. And then, you know, cause thank God I, I've rented in one place for coming on five years now, no issues. Um, it's, it's more straightforward, I believe, in the Philippines. And an update on a future video that I wanna do based on business licensing and the process of it. I'm still compiling a data sheet step-by-step -step of uh, how to get one because what happens is in the Philippines, I don't want to be hassled by those things, right? And I usually have a particular company that does everything for me, processes everything for me. There's an SPA involved and things like that, and they do everything for me. And by the time it reaches me, it's just a signature. That's a common thing back home, unfortunately. Like most business people, they don't really run into the office, you know? They don't really run into, they're not really in line like, uh, you know, because labor is, labor is pretty cheap for these type of services. And even as bookkeeping, all those things, those are sourced out to, you know, certain companies for, you know, just, just for that. Obviously, if it's a simple, non-complex business, uh, ergo, sorry, sorry, store, things like that, then there's really no need to be, to have a lawyer or source out certain work. Now, if you're dealing with a business that can potentially make more than 300,000 a month, 100, 200,000 a month, then, you know, you kind of probably have to do better bookkeeping. And especially, like, there's a lot of goods, you, you have a lot of stuff on the SKU, like different products, services, then you definitely have you need something, you need a either in-house bookkeeping uh, staff or you can source it out like what I do from time to time. channel so today I want to discuss carry over what I spoke about in the morning how I go about renting uh, stores and you know things like that there are basically four things I focus on when dealing with uh, situations like that where I have to rent a place best thing in my brain is to try to own the property right and then you live rent free or that's one thing that you can save from your bottom line but in those cases where you have to rent these are the things that I do. So on the top of that list, before even going to negotiations, I focus on four things prior to, you know, moving in, uh, even inquiring pretty much. Number one, if you are a foreigner or even a, a, if you are a foreigner, this is more for foreigners. I always, uh, I always let my wife, my Filipino partner, wife, you know, for you guys, girlfriend, whatever, I let them inquire first and negotiate a roundabout price, right? A roundabout price. That, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I do to get certain things done because once they hear this accent, I'm not saying that all of them are gonna rip you off because you're a foreigner, but they might not be negotiation room because the aesthetics might seem as if you can afford it, which in any business, you try your best to 
save at any cost, right? So, damn. I had, to raise, I had to raise that seat up, dude. Come on, man. I'm short as hell, dude. <laughs> I look like I'm like really short. Two, before, this is kind of like number one, before even going to those areas, please understand the competitive rates around the area. What is the per square meter cost of renting a storefront in your area? That's like two. But it's really like number one, but it's one and two. So three would have to be figure out if the water and electricity basically the utilities are separate from the place that you are renting because some storefronts are connected to the house some storefronts are just straight out storefronts and they are um subdivided already which is fine but sometimes I've, i'm in a place where there's apartments in the top it's like a mixed use type situation so i made sure that the water and the electricity is separate if you don't do your due diligence and they're still connected it's gonna really mess with your budget, mess with your bottom line. And another thing about those utilities, make sure they're paid up. Make sure there's no debt against the landlord, as in they might owe 6,000 pesos to the water company and they won't uh, turn yours on or that you might hit a snag due to that situation because you're gonna have to uh, uh, submit a lease agreement anyway when you um, submit for a business license. So, uh, you know, you gotta make sure there's nothing owed utilities wise to the landlord. You might catch yourself in a situation where you invested for your for your product or your service already. You have the ideal location and then a person has some debt that needs to be paid for. Now going on to the negotiations, there's there's many ways to go about this, right? There's many ways to go about this, okay? And I've done pretty much most of the ways, uh, all the ways, okay? So one, which is the most simple one is, Find the rate. So let's say it's 1,000 per month, right? I wish there was rent that cheap. 1,000 per month, so 12,000 per year. So I'll be like, listen, if I pay upfront for the whole entire year, can I pay 10,000? And then sometimes, yeah, some people agree. I've, I've done it, I've done it. Obviously not, obviously not 1, 000, on a 1,000 peso rent, but definitely I've saved because, you know, when especially if I see the person is money hungry, the landlord, I mean, or, a bit unstable when it comes to finances and things like that, getting to know the person, then then I can kind of understand how to take care of certain things, you know what I'm saying? Two would have to be, see if in the area you want to rent, anything needs to be fixed. As in, uh, you know, this thing needs to have this put in or that put in, you have to build it out and things like that. Or there's some structural damage that needs to be dealt with in order to bring value to the landlord's, to the landlord's property. I would then leverage that as in, I will pay to fix these issues and make your property look great. However, give me a break on the on the lease or the or the agreement or the payment. As in, if the rent is uh, twelve thousand a year and I spend uh, in or around twelve thousand or um, equivalent to six months worth of rent, don't let me pay for said months. So. In that sense, it, you, you can leverage what you put into the business for for the rent, for at least you can survive a little bit because you can mitigate certain costs when it comes to building and things like that, especially if you are into construction, you know a lot of people, and so on and so forth. So that's one thing I have done to my businesses. And lastly, to close out the video, just make sure that there is a lease agreement because you're gonna have to submit it anyway, but make sure it's proper, make sure that benefits both parties, and more importantly, it gives you the opportunity to grow. You know what I'm saying? Like as in, there's no raises, uh, you know, rent won't go up, this and that. And it's written in black and white what you are able to furnish or what you're able to pay and what they're able to shoulder and things like that. So that's something that needs to be dealt in an agreement. Unfortunately, in today's standards, there's no more handshake agreements. So that's one thing that you have to focus on when dealing with that. Uh, that's pretty much it. So, oh yeah, another another tip I would like to do, I would like to add is that if, as a business person, you're super optimistic. I mean, let me put this away. As a business person, we are all super optimistic. So when you go into a place, especially if it's a eatery or any type of product or, product or services, have in mind uh, thinking about the future. 
thinking about expansion. If you lock down the area, is there space enough for you to grow if and when it's time or if the opportunity avails of itself and things like that. That's another tip that I would, I would love to give you. Sometimes you just fall into it. Sometimes you can plan for it. As with anything, when renting, obviously location is a key. If your product or service needs foot traffic or visual, you know, a visual look for things. So, but obviously if you run a welding, a welding shop, and things like that or you can pretty much run any business off off or beaten track or off the beaten road or whatever but it just takes that much more marketing to get you out in the out there being a storefront being in a centralized area where a lot of foot traffic drive traffic even drive traffic can work to your disadvantage so so you know uh, you know like with anything around the world uh, location is a key that's pretty, that's pretty much it I would love for you to like this video subscribe even better and even way better comment down below with your uh, questions or comments um i will lo i love reacting to questions because one it gives me more time to pump more videos out two it it gives me a gauge of what you guys are thinking so i would because like i said before i'm pretty eccentric or I probably have ADHD. I guarantee you I have ADHD. So my brain's always going. So I need those markers, AKA comments to slow me down and focus in. And, uh, you know, for those of you who lack focus or it's hard to focus, I completely understand your, what your dilemma, because, you know, if I was a car, I'm firing at all cylinders, which is good and bad to to many degrees so take care god bless and stay safe wherever you are in the world bye